Um, welcome. Thank you guys for coming, especially on this wonderful icy day. Um, and for everybody watching at home, I hope you're enjoying a nice, warm, and toasty uh, living room experience. Uh, my name is Heather Starfiedler, and I am a professor here at Point Park, and also in my spare time, I do a couple of different social media um, efforts, I guess you could call them. One of them is to run a local parenting site called PittsburghMom.com, which is owned by the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, and uh, I run the site as the general manager. But another sort of passion project of mine, something that I started a few years ago, called Play It Forward, which is a local nonprofit toy drive that I started with a friend. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that today and how we used social media to really do the nonprofit from soup to nuts and um, build this community that we've built over the last four years. So um, we'll talk about that for a little while and I'll be open to any questions that you might have. I think by way of introduction, um, coincidentally yesterday, uh, my co-founder and I were on Pittsburgh Today Live talking about Play It Forward, so I thought I would share that with you um, in a quick little video clip here. So you can get an idea of exactly what it is. Collecting gently used toys and offering them free to families who are in need or just having a tough year. And here to tell you more about how you can contribute to this great cause is Heather Star Fiedler and Amy Kier Reinhardt. Good morning. Good morning Thanks for having us. Well, you two created this such a great idea. Tell us how it all really got going. Sure. Uh, about four years ago, I was cleaning out my own children's playroom and just had a lot of really great toys that were in perfect condition, but they had just grown out of. And I hated to just drop them in a bin somewhere, so I reached out to some friends on social media and asked if anybody knew of a family that might be you know, having a tough year and, and want them. And I found a family and gave them these toys and came to work the next day and was chatting with Amy, and we just thought it was kind of a unique concept to collect gently used toys rather than brand new toys and we thought it would be something that maybe if we put it out there and organized it that could really help a lot of people. So we put the idea out there and within a couple of hours we had hundreds of people asking to help and to donate so it stuck. Really? I mean just through Facebook, social yeah, media? Yeah, absolutely. It's all completely been a social media effort. Oh my God. Yeah, people are looking to give at the holidays but it also solves a need in families like you said of kind of cleaning out so it's sure. a perfect mixing. So explain what kind of um, well, first of all, where, who it's going to? Well, anyone can, can benefit from um, receiving the toys. We have a shopping day. It's on December 13th this year. Through a generous donation through the Century 3 Mall, we actually have a shop. A space. A, a space uh -huh. location. And so we'll be setting everything up there, and then families in need can come and shop starting at 9 a.m. And then do you have to meet some kind of income level qualification, or what, what are the rules? We work on the honor system. Um, everyone has a need, and the need is for a different reason. So okay. we don't require any documentation. You don't have to qualify. You don't have to sign up. You just, you just figure, have to come. You figure folks aren't going to come unless there's a need. Right. And is a, you can get a certain number of things per child. Is that right? Yeah. We typically, uh, you know, depending on the, the amount of donations we get, um, in the past years we've typically asked for people to take about three toys per child um, in a book and a stuffed animal nice. um, for each child that they have. And, and tell us some of the stories. I mean, have you had kids who have, have come and, and, I mean, just the look on some of the faces of the kids that we've seen yeah. already look like it's, it's, it's very moving. It is. It's, it's so heartwarming that day to be there and to see the families that come. And, and some parents bring the kids with them and to let the kids pick out the toys. A lot don't because they want to put it under the tree and, and wrap it and sure. Yeah. But some of the kids that are there are just, you know, they make all of that effort worth it. Uh, and, and why gently use toys and not do? Well, there's so many toy drives that collect new toys. So, you know, this was something that, you know, we, we like it because it not only helps us clean out our toy rooms, but it also helps us teach our children mm -hmm. about giving back. And, you know, our kids can look at their toys and say, I have 50 Matchbox cars and I don't really need 50 Matchbox cars. Let me give half of them to a little boy who may not have any. And so, you know, my children love to go through and, and really collect things for Play It Forward. And, and come to the shopping day and come to the day and help organize and they really get a lot of it a lot out of it in addition to you know cleaning out our toy room. Well last year I had two garbage bags full of toys which I was so happy to donate. You brought some today. Give us an example of what kind of things you take. Sure we take you know pretty much anything that you think a child from zero all the way up to 16 would 
would enjoy. So anything from you know dolls and trucks and baby toys. Um, obviously, the older the age, the, the lower the donations we get. So we always encourage people to even think a little bit outside the toy box okay. and donate things that might not necessarily even be a toy, but something like um, yeah, like this little purse that you know a, a girl who might be 12 would love a little purse mm -hmm. like this, or a journal, or sporting equipment, or um, an older game like Scrabble, for example. So we'll, you know we'll take it if it's in good condition and it has the, the parts and pieces. Um, we are we are happy to take it and pass it along to a family who could use it. Thank you, thank you, Heather, and we appreciate what you're doing. And for a list of all of the collection sites where you can donate your things, visit the Play It Forward website. And if you're in need of toys, come shop for free at Century Three Mall. It's December 13th, 9 to 3. Again, families can generally take about three toys, books, stuffed animal, and they're available per child, and they're available on a first come first serve basis until everything's gone. It can't happen, of course, without volunteers, and you can find out how you can help play it forward online. Look for that link at kdka.com slash ptl. And watch for more volunteer opportunities here on Pittsburgh Today Live every Friday in our Pittsburgh Has Heart feature. We're going to be right back with today's Mike and Molly DVD giveaway, and we're going to get one more check on. So that gives you an overview of what the, the nonprofit initiative is all about. And, you know, we knew that it was a good idea, but we didn't really know how to do it. And so we used social media as a way to really throw it out there and see if it would stick. And it did. And in the four years that we've been doing it, we've learned a lot by learning a lot about social media. And it's something that I teach here at Point Park. And so what I wanted to share with you today is some of the lessons that we've learned from social media and some of the things that we've done with our initiative that have really been successful and helped us to grow this initiative um, the way that we have. And we've really grown it um, a lot over the past four years. So this is really how the initiative started. I was cleaning out my own children's playroom, as you heard, and had a bunch of really great toys that were in very good condition. And I didn't really just want to dump them into a random bin somewhere at a Goodwill. So I posted this post on Facebook on November 25th of 2011 and I just asked if any friends, this was my personal Facebook, asked if any friends had somebody that they knew who might be in need and I wasn't necessarily looking for you know something really formal just somebody who was maybe struggling that year and from these seven comments that I had I found a friend who knew of a neighbor who had just moved into her neighborhood and the woman was from out of town and had a small child that was just a little bit younger than my boys and her husband right after moving here to Pittsburgh was killed in an accident and so she was really facing a very tough year and wasn't really able to even think about Christmas and how to spend the money to buy Christmas presents so um, that day right after this November 25th so really you know the late part of November I was able to give her really a whole carload full of great toys for her young son and it was such a great feeling that I went to work the next day and was talking to my coworker Amy, who you saw in the video, and she said, well, I have lots of toys like that too. I would love to do the same thing. And it was kind of a slow day, so we were chatting and decided that if we both felt that way, there were probably other people out there who might feel the same way. And I knew graphic design, and we knew social media. Amy had just done some really successful fundraising for um, another organization that she belonged to. And so we thought, you know what, let's just put something up on Facebook and give it a name and design a logo and, and see if other people feel this way as well. And so by the end of that day, we had, we had the name Play It Forward, we designed that little logo, we threw it up there and we had literally hundreds of people liking the page and asking us, how can we give you our toys? How can we give them to you so that you can give them to somebody else? Because we would love to see them go to another little boy or girl locally, you know, who we could really see their face and see the smile on their face as opposed to just kind of randomly dropping them in a bin somewhere. And so this is what started it all. And every year I post this. Um, and that's part of our social media strategy is that every year I post this picture, um, this screenshot, because it helps people to really connect with the story. And I'm a big believer that when you're trying to tell the story of a nonprofit, that you need for people to connect with the story. You need for them to know why you're doing it and how it got started. So every year we tell the story of how it got started. And that every time we post this, you know, our likes go up 
by a whole lot. Um, and we really get a lot of new followers, we get people sharing this story, and, and they just really love that really personal story. And so that's part of our social media strategy, is to tell that story every year to new people. Another thing that we think is really important is visuals. Um, you know, toys are very colorful. Our logo is very colorful. The kids' faces are, are, you know, such great. And we don't get a lot of kids that come that day because a lot of parents, you know, want to get the toys and bring them and put them under the tree. But we do get a few kids that come. And every time we get those kids, we always, you know, stalk them that day. And we follow them around with a camera and hope they pick up a toy and smile and take their picture. And then we use that picture like crazy the next year uh, because it's, you know, we think that visuals really play a huge part in our social media strategy to get people on, on board with our mission. And so we take lots of pictures of very colorful toys and very exciting toys like bicycles and kitchens and things that are uh, in good shape and that, you know, people can say, oh wait, I have a bicycle in my house, I never thought about that. I could, you know, my son's grown out of that now, I could pass that on along. We use, as I said, a lot of photos that really try to humanize the effort. So we, you know, we want people to connect with us and to really feel like they're helping a, you know, not just they're giving money or they're volunteering or they're dropping off a toy that might help somebody somewhere sometime, but that they're helping this little boy right here. Um, and you know, we kind of have these little poster children each year that we find and we take a picture of and you know we ask if that's okay obviously with their parents but we kind of pick these children each year and we use their picture quite a bit because that really helps people to connect with the story and once they connect with the story you know they really want to make a donation or they really want to sign up and volunteer and i'll show you later some proof of how we know this is working for us so we try to use a lot of photos of kids and of people volunteering and uh, of things that really have people realize that this is a, a very direct influence. You know, it's I can give this toy and I can see that that book right there is the book I donated. Um, and, and it's such a personal effort um, and a local effort, which is I think something that's made it very successful. We also know that we get new likes and new followers all the time. You know, our our number of followers on Facebook goes up every single day. And every time we post something, it gets shared a lot. Our engagement is, is really quite high for what we're doing. And so, you know, this particular one, our frequently asked questions, we post it quite often. We post it every year. We update it and we post it every year. And we post it a few times each year because we know that we have a lot of new people who aren't quite necessarily sure how it all works. And with any nonprofit, you're not always sure how it works. I just had students recently do a nonprofit assignment, and my question to them a lot was, I still don't really know how this works. You know, what exactly would I do with this nonprofit, or why would I donate, and what would that go to, or what would I be volunteering to do with them? And, you know, just sort of explaining, because there are so many different nonprofit initiatives and so many different things. So understanding exactly how it works, like what do I donate, where does it go, how do I volunteer, if I donate money, what happens to that money, explaining those things, and if I need something from you, how do I do that? Uh, explaining that in just very clear terms and giving that to people often is really important. And you can see that this was one we posted just last week and it had 47 shares. Um, and then, you know, that was just that we posted it once. And the next time we posted it had 47 shares. So each time we post it, it gets a lot of play, which then, you know, continues to make this message very viral. One thing that we've noticed that we've had a lot of success with, um, especially this year, we've started to, you know, we've changed our strategy throughout the years, but we've started to put almost all of our messaging as photographs. Um, I don't know if any of you have noticed, but, and, and I should tell you that we do 90% of our social media is on Facebook, and I'll explain that, um, why we do that a little bit later, but um, that just seems to be where our audience is, and so that, that's working for us. Um, we just, we've tried other sites and it, we just don't get as much play out of those sites. So we, we tend to be simple and stick to Facebook. So we've noticed that Facebook recently, when you share things, it's not bringing the message with a share as much anymore. You have to copy and paste the text. So, and people don't do that, they just hit share. So what we're doing now is we're actually putting all of the information that we need people to know as a graphic. 
So when they share the graphic, it's not only very colorful and it shows up nice and big, so people can see it and it, it really pops in their newsfeed, but all of the information is there and it's very easy to share. And I think that we have found, and, we, and I can show this to you in a minute, that the visuals, the pictures are getting shared way more often than if we just do a text post or a link to something. We can link to our website all day long and people aren't sharing that as much as if we put that same information in a graphic and post it as a photograph. That gets shared like crazy and all the information is there. So we have a whole bunch of these photographs that we design each year that give the information about each thing that we want to tell them. So we have drop-off days, we have a playroom clean-out event, we have information about volunteering, about donating, and we do them as photographs and save them as JPEGs and upload them and they get a ton of play and they're very bright and colorful and visual and they're big when they're in somebody's news feed and it works, it's really working for us. Um, another example of pictures as posts, so this could have just been a regular text post, and last year it was a regular text post. And that regular text post, you know, hit, hit a lot of people, but people didn't really share it as much. They read it, and they might have commented on it, but they didn't really share it. When we did it this year as a, as a graphic, it got 54 shares within that first day. And that's when I took this screenshot, which is quite a lot. Um, for the, you know, we have a couple thousand likes, so 54 <coughs> shares is great, and um, that was just the first day, I think it's gone up since then. So we're really getting a ton of play out of these, like, this idea of using, our inf putting our information as graphics instead of uh, text, or links to the website where it also lists that information. Um, another example of that where we list our toy categories for people to organize their donations, we did it this year as a photograph you know, and it got a lot of shares. Last year we just did it as a text list. People read it, you know, it got a lot of views, but not a lot of shares. So the views went way up this year when people started sharing the picture. Another thing that we really believe in for a few different reasons um, is really um, thanking people publicly with our social channels. So we do a lot of posting whenever people come and volunteer with us. And we, you know, we call them out with the name of their organization, and we try to tag them if we can. And we notice that when we do this, not only do they feel grateful and excited that they've been, you know, sort of spotlighted, and want to come back and volunteer with us again, which is always just a good thing to do as a nonprofit, but also they're sharing it then because oh, they're so excited that they got this picture on this page, and so they all share it. You know, there's 10 different, 12 different people in this post. All 12 of them, you know, shared it on their pages, and so now all of a sudden our audience is growing by leaps and bounds because we didn't just share a picture, but, you know, 15 different people shared this picture after we did. Um, so, you know, it's certainly, it's, we're doing it because we want to thank our volunteers, but we're also doing it with a, a bit of a social media strategy in mind that we know it's also going to have a lot more viral play to it because these people are going to be sharing it out as well. And the same thing here, we make sure to highlight individuals that have volunteered with us. So we, we took these two little children who came and helped and brought their own toys and we're so excited about it. And we noticed that as soon as we did this, their mother saw this post, shared it and thanked us. And then from her post, you know, her, the grandmother shared it. And so people, you know, they see their post on here and then they want to share it forward. So it's, it's, um, it gets a lot of viral play. Plus it also really just helps with the goodwill of the nonprofit that people know that we appreciate what they're doing for us. Same thing with our sponsors and donors. So people that have helped us in any way, we try to call them out publicly, especially if they're a business. We, we friend their business, we tag their business in this. So this is an example of that. So um, Blonix Upholstery is a business that has a delivery truck and when they're not using the delivery truck, they'll help us use it to cart toys back and forth between places, so we always make sure to thank them and give them a, you know, a, a shout out, and and then they share it, and they have a nice big social media audience, so when they share it, that audience is now seeing our posts, and when we do that, we notice that our likes and our followers go way up that day. So, you know, we, we do it for both of those reasons. One, to you know, truly thank the people that are helping us, but also because we know that it's going to get the message out there. Um, and we, we do these things leading up to um, 
the big ask that we have for um, volunteers and donors, which I'll talk about in just a second. And then at least once a year, we kind of hate doing this, but we know we need to, at least once a year, Amy and I post a picture of ourselves because we, we need people to know that this isn't just some big organization with a board of directors and you know a nameless, faceless people running it, but it's really just two working moms. And when they know that it's two working moms who do this in their spare time, you wouldn't believe the amount of people who come forward to help us. And even if people are grumpy about something, if they get there and the toy that they wanted isn't there, or if we run out of something, or if they, anytime somebody is the least bit upset with us, if we say, hey, we're just two working moms who are trying to do this to help people, that shuts down any negativity we ever might get. So we always try to, um, you know, we post that, the video that we typically go when we go on KDKA, and we usually, every year at one point, we post a picture of ourselves, um, just so people know that there are real people behind this nonprofit um, and who those people are. So when they're asking us a question and when they're volunteering and we're answering those emails, they, they can kind of put a face with that name. And I think that really helps um, drive their interest in being connected with the initiative that we're doing. You know, when we post this photo, we have 200 people like it, which is 10% of our, our audience, which is pretty great. We also really encourage other people to post on our page and their own pages. So in this case, this was a volunteer that was helping us collect toys. So she took a picture of toys that she had collected and posted it to her own page, and she has hundreds and hundreds of friends, and tagged us in it and said, you know, I just had people drop off these toys, this effort is so wonderful. So now all of a sudden her, you know, 500 Facebook friends, now all of a sudden are clicking on our page to see what that's all about, and now, we, you know, our likes just went way up again that day. And the same thing with volunteers. When we have volunteers come and work with us, um, in this example, it was a mother who's brought her son to volunteer. We encourage them to post as well on their page or on our page, and their friends all see it. So this particular woman posted the picture of her son volunteering, and, and once again, you know, all of her Facebook friends see that post and our likes and followers go way up again that day. So this is how we've been able to grow this from, you know, the first day we did it four years ago when we had a couple of followers to today when we have several thousand followers and hundreds of volunteers um, in just a few short years. We also encourage, and this is a little harder to do, but this is my favorite thing when it happens. When people actually come and receive the toys, we love it when they post something about it. Now, it doesn't happen nearly as often because often people don't really want to publicly say that they came to get assistance, but when they do, it just really is the best thing in the world because not only do they post it, but they'll often post a picture of what it is, and the people who donated that, that is the absolute best, you know, sort of closing the loop that you can imagine. When you see something that you donated and then you see the person who got it, thanking you, random stranger, on Facebook um, with your beaver costume. I don't know who on <laughs> earth would have bought a beaver costume and donated it, but this boy was really happy with this beaver costume. And the mom was so happy with the beaver costume that she felt compelled to take a picture and post it to our page. And so, you know, that is the absolute best thing that we can ever have happen is when people do, uh, and we usually, the day of the drive, we give, we make cards that say, you know, we're so happy that we were able to help you and thank you for coming today. You know, if you can, if you can play it forward next year, either by donating toys back that you received this year, if you're done playing with them, you know, posting something to our page to show how your son or daughter liked the toy, you know, coming to volunteer next year, you know, telling your friends about it, we would love all of those things. So we do sort of encourage them and give them the tools to, to become part of the effort the next year. So we don't just want people to come and take, we want people to come and take and then become part of the circle the following year. And we do have a lot of people who do that. They come and volunteer or they donate the toys back that they got the previous year because they're now done with those toys and then they get new toys the next year, which is really a neat thing too. And here's a really neat idea that works beautifully. Um, uh, I got this idea from another uh, 
PR firm, and I tried it out this year for the first time, and it's been working great. And they called it a partner social training, which I love that name, so we used it too. And basically, what um, what we do is we get together with anybody who's partnering with us on this effort. And in our case, the partners are people who are collecting or sometimes volunteering or, you know, like the people who have the truck for us, any of those partners. We have businesses around the region who collect the toys for us, so those are considered our partners. And we know that they will post, you know, that they're collecting toys, but sometimes they're not that great about it because they forget or they're busy or they're not great with social media themselves. So what we've done for them is we email them and we write the post for them and we provide the content, we provide the graphics, we provide the links, and we give them, you know, week by week, here's what you should post this week, here's what you should post next week, and it's completely optional. We just say, if you would like to, you know, promote the fact that you're collecting toys, here's what you can say so you don't have to write it. And here's a link and here's a graphic. You know, basically this week it says, we're still collecting toys for one more week, um, we're happy to, you know, we're part at least to partner with Play Forward, come and drop off your toys, and you know, and we'll get them to you know families, and we thank you for helping us this year. And then they can just post it if they want to copy and paste it. And we've noticed that they absolutely are doing it. So this is an example of my email to our partners, and then on the right hand side is an example of how one of those partners and several of them did um, literally took my email, copied and pasted it, and posted it right to their Facebook page the day I sent the email. So. Now everybody who is one of their Facebook friends is getting that message. Some of them are pretty good about sharing what we're posting anyway or posting their own links, but not all of them are. So this is a great way to just give them the content and if you write it, they'll post it for you. So it saves them the time of having to write it and they're happy to do it. So it's definitely worth the effort to try to create this partner social train with your nonprofit if you have the time to just give them the content and let them post it for you on their page. And then again, that really just increases your audience once again. So we noticed again the day that we did this and we saw these partners posting our content, our page got very busy that day. And that's the day that we would then post something like the frequently asked questions because we know we have all these new users, um, new followers. Another thing that we do is we ask for small things but we ask for them often. Now, this may not work for every nonprofit, but ours is kind of a small, scrappy, bootstrap nonprofit. So this works really well for us. And so we ask for basically a couple of things each year. Volunteers, um, toys are really not a problem. I have to say we have more toys than we know what to do with in some cases. Um, but volunteers to get people to come and help us organize all those toys and money to help us buy things like tape and bags and boxes and you know insurance and things like that. So we have gone to the uh, model of asking for small things but asking for them more often. So rather than have one big you know fundraiser each year, we ask every week for some volunteers and every week for a little bit of money. And so this is an example of how we ask for volunteers. So we ask once a week or so we, you know, we tell them we still need volunteers or we can't make this happen, and we just ask them for two hours. You know, two hours of your time, that's all we're asking. It's not a huge commitment, it's easy to do. We make it as easy as possible. And so this is an example of a post that I did uh, last week, and I posted that we just needed two hours of your time in a two-week period. You can bring your kids, bring your family, that's great. Um, Within an hour of that post, my email blew up, as you can see on the Sign Up Genius email notifications, and I had 50 new volunteers um, within an hour of this post. So asking small, but asking often, really works for our initiative. Um, now, that may not be something that's translatable to every nonprofit, but it definitely works for us. And I think the, the most um, exciting thing that we can prove that with is our um, money asking that we do each year. So each year we ask for a little bit of money from people. So this is this year's, which I haven't posted yet. Uh, we usually post and ask for things every week or so, we ask for a few dollars. This is what I'm gonna post on Tuesday. Um, and again, we try to connect it. We try to really keep it very simple. Give us a cup of coffee. 
Starbucks cost about five dollars for a nice, you know, uh, mocha frappuccino or, um, you know, a pumpkin spice latte. Give up that one time this week to make this little kid smile like that. That's all we're asking you for. And we do that on what's called Giving Tuesday, which is coming up this Tuesday. So I'm going to post this on Tuesday. Now we do this often, the $5 thing, but the biggest time we do it is on Giving Tuesday because people, it's a great way to, it's a great hook. It's, you know, it's Giving Tuesday. It's a great day to give up a cup of coffee. Um, and that's all we're asking you for is give up your cup of coffee today and help a little boy. And, you know, we use it for, and we tell them what we use it for because sometimes people are like, if you're getting my toy and you're giving it to somebody else, how does that cost you any money? So we do need to explain that it does cost us a little bit of money. We need to buy tape and boxes and bags and, you know, we, we do buy the volunteers some food when they're there for eight hours that day. Um, and we have to get some insurance and things like that. So we do have some, you know, funds that we need to raise. So we do this each year. And we do it a couple of times throughout, you know, we ask small, but we ask often. So usually once a week or once every couple of weeks in the couple of months leading up to it. But then on Giving Tuesday, we really push this out there. And we not only ask um, for it, but we ask people to share it as well. And when we did this last year, we, we didn't use the graphic. That's something new we're trying this year. We used a photo of this little boy. But we said, give us just $5, cup of coffee. We know that people will give us $5, but we also know that some people will give us more than $5. So if you ask for 20, people might say, that's too much, I'm not going to do anything. But if you ask for five, people will often give you 20. It's not like they're going to say, oh, well, they only wanted five, so that's all I'm giving them. Um, the day that we did this, this was our PayPal account, and um, that's just one page of it. We raised $2,000 with these little $5 donations. Um, if everybody gave us five dollars, we could hit our goal in a day, and that's all we ask for. And we do typically hit our goal in that day by asking for people to give us five dollars. And some people give us five dollars, and then some people give us a hundred dollars. So, you know, we know that we'll get more than five, and we, we sort of hope that we do, because truly if people did only give us five, everybody, we might not raise our goal in that day, but we, we kind of take that risk. We ask for five, knowing that we'll probably get 25 from a lot of people, and, and every year it works beautifully. Um, hopefully, cross fingers crossed, it'll work again this year. Um, but again, we tie it to that picture of that smiling little kid, and, um, and we make it very you know, manageable. We say, here's what $5 is in your life, but here's what it is for this little boy, and here's what it can buy. $5 buys a box of bags or it buys, you know, um, a, um, some insurance, or it buys a coffee for the volunteers. Like we're, we're gonna tie it to real things that we're actually gonna use that $5 for. And people really respond so well to that. Um, so we're gonna keep doing that as long as it keeps working. Um, and we need to make sure that we pay attention to our analytics. Um, so, this is how we know to do the pictures. Um, this is just a quick screenshot of our Facebook analytics. And you can see that, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that posting those photos is what's working for us. And so it's always my, uh, when I teach, it's, you know, I always say, photos may not be what works for you. What you need to do is look at your analytics and see what's working for you. Try a bunch of different things when you're first starting and then see what works for you. We know when we look at this that photos are what works for us. Our average reach of our photos is over 4,000 people. We only have 2,000 likes on our page. So we're reaching more than twice the number of people who actually like our page with our photos. That's pretty huge. Um, we know that about 200 people engage with our photos. That's 10% of our likes. That's a pretty big engagement rate. So. We know that when we post those photos, it's working. And so we're gonna keep doing that. That's what works for us. Um, links are pretty good too. Status updates are not as great. So, you know, we're gonna post more photos and less status updates because we know that's working. What we found this year that some of you, if you manage any Facebook pages, um, we've noticed that is very um, challenging is that when you type text to go with a photo, if you shared it in previous weeks, months, or years, the text came with the share. 
all of a sudden now it's stripped. So it only has the photograph and no text with it. Um, that's why we've been putting the text as part of our photo. Because if we just posted the photo of the little boy and people hit share, everybody on their friends list is going to see this great picture of a little boy. But unless they actually copied and pasted our text, which people just don't do, and let's be honest, um, they're not going to know what that photo is all about. Uh, we're going to have a real challenge next week with our fundraising drive because that photo is great and it tells them what they need to do, but the link to the PayPal account is going to be in the text. So it's in the photo, but it, it's not clickable in the photo. So they're either going to have to know if they share it to you know, click the link and, and copy it when they share or type in the link from the photo and I, I fear that that's going to hurt us this year. Um, I think anybody who sees our page organically and clicks the link is going to go to PayPal, but we've often had great success with people sharing that fundraising page and other people donating money because of that share. That share is not going to happen as well this year because when they click share, the link is going away um, in our text. Um, and if that doesn't make any sense to you, let me, let me show you an example of it. Um, I've just noticed this change pretty recently, and I haven't thought of a great way yet to combat this. But if anybody has suggestions, I'm open to them. So we did share our um, PayPal link recently, and I was able to put some text in and even change the PayPal link to say, instead of just saying PayPal, you know, the basic PayPal information, I was able to change it to say, play it forward donation. Um, and so here's a link to, uh, we're still a long way away from our funding goal. There's our PayPal link and it says online merchant PayPal account. But look at what happens when I hit share. All people are going to get is this link. Oh, well, now it's going to do it. But it doesn't, <laughs> of course, it's going to prove me wrong. Normally, it this whole piece here is not there. It only has the link itself. And the text that goes with the link that I typed is gone. So all they're going to see is this online merchant account PayPal, which does nobody any good because they don't know what that is. It doesn't say what we're raising money for. It doesn't even say our name on it. So people are not going to click it and donate money. So we need to find a way to combat that. So if I post that graphic that I created, that's wonderful. but the text with the actual clickable link in it isn't going to go with it. So we need to sort of figure out a little, you know, brainstorm some ways to get that link to go. So typically speaking, when you share a link, it's not going to take the text with it lately, unless they've gone back to it in the last few days, um, which would be wonderful if that's true. But in the last couple of weeks, it hasn't worked. So. So we know that our posts are really working very well. We also make sure to go into these analytics and look at all of our posts and see really what's performing well and do those things more often. So we can see by looking at this that you know the posts where we've shared really general information and we've asked people to share it with their friends has huge engagement. So the biggest one here, the 13,000 views, is one where we said, does everybody you know know about Play Forward? If not, please share this. And people did, you know. So we basically asked them to do it, and they did. Um, people, if they like your initiative, and you ask them to help you, they typically will. But you have to ask. Um, the next biggest one that we had was also another one where we said, if you have any questions, here's our frequently asked questions page. Share this with your friends, and you know, tell them about it. And they did. So. When we ask people for things, they typically do it for us because they like what we're doing. But we have to ask. If we just post the frequently asked questions, they read them, but they don't always share them unless we say share them. So sometimes you just have to simply ask people to do what you want them to do. Um, and this is where we know that Facebook is really where we want to be. So this is a Pew Research study, and you know we know that Facebook is still probably the biggest social network for our audience, which is women, and which is 
typically, you know, women of, you know, the 30, you know, the 25 to 45 age range, and, you know, certainly they're big on Pinterest and things like that as well, but that's not really where we want to be sharing information. Facebook is still pretty huge. This was done in 2013, so it's not, you know, this year, but it's about as new as we're going to get. Twitter is, is very popular and I think would be very successful, but I think we're, we're so successful on Facebook that we don't necessarily need to be tweeting a lot. We do tweet the day of the toy drive to give people updates about, you know, if the toys are getting low or getting gone, but quite honestly, the, the income level matters as well. And we know that our recipients are people that probably have a lower income level and Twitter tends to skew toward a higher income level. So our donors, people who are donating toys and donating money, are people who are more likely to be on Twitter. But the breaking updates that we need to give are people that we need to give to our recipients. And those people aren't typically as big Twitter users as our donors are. So where we probably need to be using Twitter isn't necessarily the audience that's on Twitter, if that makes sense. So for us, it's, it's been very successful, so we, we don't want to reinvent the wheel, to just use Facebook for now. And it's been working wonderfully. And that's, you know, if people need to reach us quickly, we have it, you know, we, it goes to our phones, they can send us a private message, they can post in a thread and we answer it very quickly. So we kind of use it in a, in a Twitter mindset, um, but we, when we do sort of the breaking tweets, they get out to our donors, but not necessarily to the recipients who might need to get them that day. If we need to post breaking tweets about volunteer information, you know, if there's been a change in times or if we need more volunteers, that is very successful. Um, but when we say, you know, it's snowing, the doors are opening a little late, or we're running out of toys or something like that, we're not really reaching our recipients with Twitter very easily. Um, we also sort of celebrate our accomplishments, and that also helps for people to feel like this is an effort they want to be involved with because they see it growing. So this was a couple of years ago. The mayor declared it um, officially Play It Forward Pittsburgh Day in the city of Pittsburgh. So we um, went and accepted that and then obviously shared that with our followers on Facebook and, um, and they shared that with all of their social networks as well. And we get a lot of earned media. We have not spent a penny to promote this event or this initiative. We don't do any paid media or paid advertising at all. Everything we do, we do by sending out really good press releases, by making good phone calls, by asking people to help us, and um, people do. Just yesterday after the KDK segment, we got a private message asking if we would like some local Pittsburgh celebrities to come to the toy drive and, you know, join us and post about it and we said sure if they want to come you know we would love to have them so people kind of come to us which is great so we get um, the news channels all come each year to the drive um, and um, do a little piece on it that day the trib typically comes and writes a story on it that day the post gazette has done a story pop city has done a story um, we've been very lucky with earned media uh, just because we're pretty crafty about getting the word out there and really requesting media. Um, you know, we make sure that we know um, to send a request for media presence out there before the toy drive and even in the weeks prior and we have good relationships with the media. You know, so when we're ready to go on the, you know, Pittsburgh Today Live, we send them an email and say, hey, we would love to come back again this year and they graciously invite us back every year. Um, and um, I think this is our final slide, but we really try to celebrate the growth. So, you know, we started with the first year where I think we did it for about 16 days uh, because after I posted that first Facebook message to the time we gave away the toys, it was about two weeks and it was crazy. We literally drove to people's houses and picked up toys at random strangers' houses, which was really a stupid idea in retrospect, but it worked that year. And um, we had about 5,000 toys that year. The second year, we grew to about 20,000 toys. And that was when we were named sort of Play It Forward Pittsburgh Day in the city of Pittsburgh. We also started a partnership, which we still enjoy, with um, Pittsburgh Cares. Pittsburgh Cares runs the Toys for Tots um, initiative. And Toys for Tots only accepts new toys. 
but they often get a lot of toys that are damaged. So if somebody throws a new toy in one of those donation bins and then somebody else throws a heavier toy on top of it and it breaks the box or rips it a little bit, they can't take it. They can't give it out to somebody. So they give it to us and we give it out to somebody. So we have this wonderful relationship. They have a big giant pile in their warehouse of what they call contraband that they can't actually give out. And um, they give it to us and we give it out. So it's a great way for us to sort of share our resources and work together um, to help the most people. Um, and then in the third year, which was last year, we collected at least more than 50,000 toys. We, we couldn't possibly count them, but it was pretty crazy. Um, and we know that we served over 2,000 kids. And um, the big sort of new thing we had last year was the Salvation Army came and helped serve hot cocoa to all the people in the parking lot waiting to get into the building. So we try to do something a little bit new each year um, to grow it. And then this year, our new thing is that we have a new location. We've always wanted to have a location where we can collect, organize, clean, sort everything, and then give away all in the same spot. So to be in somewhere for a few weeks where we don't have to move the toys from location to location, with trucks and things. And so this year, Century 3 called us and said, we would love to donate a space to you. So um, again, not something we paid for. They called us and said, we want to help. So that's our big news for this year. And how many people we donate to and help and how many toys we collect is yet to be determined. But we'll know that in a couple of weeks. So um, I think that was everything I had. So does anybody have any questions? Um, have you thought about, for example, Century 3 is a bit of a ways out from maybe some of you in a distressed neighborhood in the city, mm -hmm. um, having some partners that might do a, a distribution at a church or something? Yeah, you know, the first year we did two different locations. We had a distribution at a church, and our, our biggest partner in the last three years has been at Propel Braddock Hills High School, um, and they've been wonderful. And, and they're really in an area of need. And so, but the reason that we left Braddock this year was just because of the size. We grew out of the school. Um, we would love to have more locations. It's just that we really want to make sure that it's done well. And it takes a lot of effort to make sure that um, people come in and they sign waivers and that they, you know, it's, the toys are there and organized. And, and so, and there's only two of us. So, I think that in the future that's one of our big goals is to grow to more locations. One of the things that we, we definitely uh, was a deal breaker for us was any location that wasn't on a bus line. So even though we're in Century 3, we made sure that it was on a bus line so that people could still get to us if they didn't have transportation. So you know we would love to have more partners that are in different areas of need, certainly. And we've even had people ask us about doing this in other cities. And um, a couple of years ago, we helped a group in, I think it was Vermont or New Hampshire, start a similar drive. Um, and we gave them sort of all of our materials, and, um, and I think they got started with something similar where they were. The name certainly a place being used anywhere. It's Memphis, you know, play forward Memphis. Yeah. Else like that. Yeah. Um, I did see two big little things, uh, volunteers is volunteers are in that one about the one text thing that you had there. Oh, okay. And the other thing I that I mean, your photo that you're going to be sending out where it says uh, to donate the weekly to Starbucks with NPR and all these others talking about uh, having the auto deduction over the whole year. When I first heard that I'm thinking Let's see, weekly times five dollars, that's 52 times five, that's a $300. Right, Start actually, up. I think I've edited that since then, and I think it just says a cup of coffee. Yeah. Or if it could say your weekly, your, your weekly Starbucks this week, it would be the other way to do it. To just add in this week, right. Right, your weekly Starbucks. That would be a way to, to make clear that you're just asking. For right, yeah. yeah. First of all, I have to just congratulate you and your partner. I, I think this is really fabulous. Thank you. And that you are all doing it and it's it's grown and thrived. It's amazing. Um, kudos to you. So that's the first thing. Secondly, I'm wondering, um, I, I recognize that this is for a nonprofit, 
Marina, I guess I'm wondering if, let's say, um, you or your partner or others wanted to, to, you know, you were investing more and more time in it and wanted to earn an income through this um, arena. Would it change anything, like use of PayPal or anything else? Um, sure. How you approach it? Yeah, I think that you know, as we grow, there's always that option. You know, sure. I and we've talked about it quite a bit. Amy, who is my partner, would love to do this full time. She would love to grow it to the point where you know it's a bigger nonprofit and that she's the you know the CEO and, yes. and and has a salary and you know and I mean I think we would always run it as a nonprofit, but even as a nonprofit, you can collect a salary to run the nonprofit, which would be great. I love my teaching job here, so I probably wouldn't do it as a full-time thing. I would, you know, just do it as an advisor, I guess. Um, but she would love to quit her job tomorrow and, and um, actually do this for a living. And so I think that's something that we're working toward. And we, you know, we find a lot of helpers, which I didn't talk about in here, but, you know, we've asked for people who can help us with boxes or help us with truck. And, and one of the things that we've asked for this year is to help um, find an accountant who can help us understand how to actually more formally do the nonprofit because in the last few years we've just sort of done this as an initiative we call it we you know we're not officially a business or a nonprofit but now this year we finally sort of gotten our act together and we've we've become uh, an official Pennsylvania corporation and we filed for nonprofit status and it's a it's a lot of paperwork and it's very complicated and but we have an accountant who just knows about us because she's been a volunteer and um, wanted to help so she's been helping us free of charge so we've even found you know, people who are willing to help us with those sorts of things by just reaching out to our, our members of our, our initiative. So, you know, as we continue to grow, that's one side that I think, in addition, in addition to sort of growing the toy donations and things like that, is sort of growing the business end of it. And I think that's something that we might, you know, do in the future is to make it bigger and make it national or whatever it might right. be. Right, but would you need to change any of your social media approach whether legally or just in right. general. I'm sure we would, yeah, as we got bigger. And I don't know what that would look like until we did it, I think. You know, we would we would need to figure that out as we went. But you could continue to use, let's say, PayPal or whatever. Is that the thing? We legal? could, sure. You know, I think there are plenty of nonprofits who are still using PayPal, but we would probably, you know, PayPal charges a fee. So I think if we were taking bigger donations, and once we become and one thing we haven't done yet that we would love to do is apply for grants, which I think we could easily get. People are always offering us money, but we have to become an official nonprofit to get a lot of grants. And even even things like um, renting space and doing other things, you have to be a nonprofit to get a lot of those better um, deals and situations. And so we need to get that nonprofit paperwork approved, which sometimes takes a couple of years with the government. And so we're waiting, you know, like many nonprofits are right now, is waiting that however long it takes the government to get the paperwork through. But once we do that, we'll be able to apply for grants. And then I think we probably won't just use PayPal. We'll probably have a much better, more formal system than that. But other than that, off the top of your head, nothing would really necessarily have to, you wouldn't have to announce something about, you know, I, I can't even think of anything in particular, but you wouldn't have to specifically change anything Nothing really stands out. I don't up. think so. I mean, I think we're growing it in a very organic way. You know, now we have a board of directors, and we have an accountant, and a treasurer, and a you know, and a, and a secretary, and you know, we, we kind of are growing it um, in the way that I think it needs to go to be more formal. So I think we're doing that just sort of slowly. Thank you. Um, we have four of us on the board, so it's pretty small. We have a, um, Amy and I, and then we have a secretary and a, uh, actually, I'm sorry, five. Um, so we have a secretary, a treasurer, and a committee chair. And those are volunteers who, you know, we didn't even know a few of them until we started this, and they've just been such dedicated volunteers over the past few years that we've asked them to join the board. Well, I mean, I run uh, Pittsburgh Freenet, who's a friend of mine, so running it. Died August a year ago, so now it's just not a one. Um, there's always that issue of just the two people as this, rather than adding in some extra. I understand you had a lot of volunteers, but I mean, adding in so that it becomes more than just 
you two so right. you have like maybe regular meetings where you're right yeah and that's what we've done this year finally is we've actually officially established a board and we'll have meetings and you know yeah we're getting there we're, yeah. we're becoming so, more formal so it's just picture Five exactly. Just two right. Yeah, that was last year's picture. So this year we'll have the rest of the board in the picture. Thank you all very much. Appreciate Thank you. It.